Hello. An innovation in the Australian cotton industry is gaining a foothold overseas. An unlikely piece of material laid over the plants can boost yield and maximise water usage. Biodegradable film is also proving worthwhile for more than just cotton and is being used on other farms around the world. Courtney Wilson with this report. The Darling Downs in Queensland is ideal country for growing cotton especially when water is more valuable than ever. Yeah, a lot of cotton on it now. Because of the drought again, people are looking for the best bang for their buck with their water. But like anyone who makes a living off the land, cotton growers know they can't bank on continuing to get more bang for their buck unless they keep getting better. With so much of Queensland and New South Wales drought declared or drought affected, everyone is looking for ways to make better use of what water they do have. Water's the one thing we're not getting any more of, so we've got to use it more efficiently. Input prices are going up, commodities aren't really going up, so we've got to max maximise the water we've got because yeah, it's just a limited source. That's what makes innovations like this so promising. This modified planter is laying biodegradable film, which could change the way cotton and other thirsty crops are grown all over the world. The water can still be used, it just can be used better. There's potential with the same amount of water to increase the yield. Uh, I'd like to think to up to 50%. Nick Clapham is a third generation cotton grower at Cecil Plains on the central Darling Downs. We generally grow single skip cotton, so on average yeah, we like to have a yield over three bales to the acre, which is seven and a half bales to the hectare. Anything over that we're happy. This season, sadly, there's no cotton in the ground where it normally would be on Nick's place. He fought and lost a battle with Mother Nature. A hailstorm smashed his crop on Boxing Day. We try to grow about a thousand acres every year. That's water depending. It's all single skip, so it's really two thirds of that solid and, cotton. And so if it goes in in November, ideally when would it be picking time? Oh, Easter time, generally. That's usually when we like to pick, but that's all weather dependent, obviously. Hopefully no hail this, yeah. this season. <laughs> yes, please. We've had <laughs> two out of three years that we've been smashed with hail, so I think we're due for about 15 years with none. Despite that run of bad luck, Nick Clapham remains optimistic. And that's partly because of the promising results he's seen firsthand from growing his cotton under film. First year that got hailed out, we actually did see an improvement in that. We grew that cotton tree and we still saw our bale of the hectare or better than a bale of the hectare under that film, in, even in the hailed out scenario. So last year was probably our best representative trial against non film cotton, um, very dry year. It um, had a very cold start and the cotton not under film, we had to replant twice due to the cold start where the stuff under film uh, we got to grow through. The biodegradable film is laid at the same time as the seed is planted. By trapping heat from the sun, it raises the soil temperature several degrees, which is really beneficial for getting cotton seeds established. It seems that the physiology of cotton is, um, is such that it really, as a desert fruit, it really loves heat. By creating the microclimate, and adding and bringing the moisture up to the seed bed with very little stress it can move around and start to establish itself. Landline first heard about the use of biodegradable film on cotton crops in Emerald back in 2014. 
This year, they rolled the film on a commercial scale and the growth difference is obvious. Both rows planted on the 3rd of August, yeah, okay. one with biodegradable film and the other yeah, without. Yeah, exactly. Back then, the work was focused on using the film to raise soil temperatures and allow for earlier planting and therefore picking in an attempt to mitigate the central Queensland wet season. But what it revealed was that the technology would actually be more useful further south, where the temperature has more ups and downs, making growing conditions tougher for cotton. So how much have you guys got planted to cotton this season? We only planned 500... Former Cotton Australia board member Stuart Armitage has been growing cotton on the Darling Downs for decades and is still surprised at what the weather gods sometimes serve up. What will happen to this? Yeah, we've seen frost out here in November, so you can almost guarantee that we'll get cold shock somewhere in the early growing season. Cold shock is when sudden drops in temperature significantly set a cotton crop back. So it's something growers want to avoid where possible. If you get one cold shock day, that slows the, the growth rate down predominantly. And then you, you end up with a soil borne disease which slows it down again. So then all of a sudden you're a week behind where you should be. So this is just maintaining that growth that we need. Our system really takes the peaks and the troughs it smooths the temperature charts a little bit, you know. It is possible to still have cold shock, but you are adding an additional six to seven degrees during the day on top of whatever those soil temperatures would normally be. Depending on the type of soil, it takes between six and eight weeks for the film to break down. After 90 days, it's completely gone. It's really a blend of starches, low density polymers and some minerals uh, really that you would find in a very similar to what you would find in a vitamin tablet. They oxidize which um, helps everything break down, lets mother nature get between the molecules and uh, to no ill effect or detriment to the natural environment. Mm -hmm. Like with all new ideas, the journey to bring biodegradable film to Australia's cotton industry hasn't been without hurdles. Although the inventors knew the technology worked, they didn't have the capacity to roll it out on a commercial scale. Following the field trials in Emerald, David McGrath was put in touch with Michael Freeman, the general manager of a family-owned company in the business of making precision planters. We've been manufacturing planters since the late 70s. We have our head office here in Edgeroy based on our family farm and our factories in Toowoomba. Michael has spent the past few years working to bring biodegradable film to the cotton industry. They needed us to develop some machinery to lay it on a commercially viable broad acre scale. So we spent the 15 and 16 developing the machinery and the last couple of years have been spent demonstrating, putting in field trials, etc., both here in Australia and in the US. So Michael, this part here that we're seeing is what is different. That's right. The, the actual right. film layer itself well, looks so just like a planter, except for the back end. It looks a lot like and big rolls of glad wrap really rigged up to the machinery. Way. And this toolbar back is the new patent pending film layer component. And um, it's really important that when the seed is actually planted in the ground, the film is laid directly over top where those slots that's are right. so the seed can And that's can why we're out. doing it in one pass. If you don't line those slots up over the top of the seed line, the seedling will come up under the shoulder of the film and he's going to die. What's something like this worth? 150 odd thousand for the six row machine you see sitting here. So is that a sound investment? The theory is if growers are going to spend money on expensive seeds, then they're going to want to make sure they survive and thrive. And if biodegradable film means they're in with a much better chance of doing so, then that's where the value lies. Cotton's a sook to get out of the ground. If we can baby the plant by creating a nice warm and wet environment for it, that's a, a good start. And within five minutes of laying the film, you can already see the condensation forming under the film. So 
it locks the moisture in, it locks the temperature in, and plants like cotton and corn love that environment. The cost to put a crop under film varies from around $200 to $330 per hectare, depending on your row spacing. So in terms of cotton, in order to not only pay its way but make good money, it needs to produce around a bale more per hectare. The design process all happens here in the factory at Toowoomba. We've got two engineers in our design office where everything is modelled on the computers and manufactured on the computers before we even cut a piece of steel in the workshop. From there, once we're satisfied, uh, we outsource all of our laser cutting and machining. Uh, we do all of our own pressing and forming and shaping here in-house and we do all of our own fab work in-house. In the past couple of years, Michael Freeman has been working his way across the United States, putting not just cotton under film, but also corn and hemp. He says the results speak for themselves. So in our first season in the US, we put in 50 acres over half a dozen sites. And this season in the US, we put in uh, 300 odd acres over 12 sites in nine states. We've had some of the best results we've ever had in uh, West Texas. Uh, we had a dryland cotton crop there that put on an extra 47% yield. Gaining a foothold into the US market has been a huge coup, given the size and scale of crops grown in the States that could potentially be put under film. There is millions of acres there. And what we've proven is they've got challenges that we have formed solutions to. So whether it be for, for vigour, for um, risk mitigation, or simply yield. Then there's the next big goal, China. In the north, to protect the crop from freezing temperatures, they use non-biodegradable film on their cotton, essentially plastic. Because it can snow maybe two to three times around planting, uh, which cotton does not like, um, they've been using just a straight um, uh, polyethylene um, film, films for maybe 20 years. So um, it's not pretty, but they absolutely rely on it. There's two million hectares of cotton in, um, in Xinjiang and 100% of that crop is, um, is using plastic. So what happens to that plastic at the end of a season? And it's, it's a mess. It's, it's completely unsustainable. But finding a place in the Chinese market has proven tricky. The manual nature of cropping in China means heavy and expensive machinery like the film layer is totally foreign. Still, David McGrath is hopeful. We've been trialling the product over there for three years. We have uh, a level of certification from the authorities over there now to start to put the product um, commercial. Back home, the impetus is on proving the worth of the film for water efficiency. We think that with the system, you can eliminate the post-germination water up. If we can be saving two irrigations, you're talking about $500 in terms of, um, of water cost, plus not having to pump it at maybe $30 a hectare, something like that. More data collected over several years is required to really gauge how big of an impact the film makes In the meantime, Michael Freeman, who is also a grower himself, says yield increases will be what makes or breaks the fledgling industry. It's going to be very driven by results. If we can continue to see these two and a half bale to the hectare yield increases, absolutely the take up will be there. But it, it is absolutely going to be driven by results. For cotton growers, each new season brings new opportunities to improve both their land management and their bottom lines. Innovation in the cotton industry is why the cotton industry is so successful. 
all of Australia we're water poor. So the more yield per megalitre we can get, the better off we are. Our margins are getting tighter, so we're starting to have to micromanage things, I suppose, and the price of cotton on general hasn't gone up much, but the price of our inputs are increasing all the time, so we've got to start thinking outside the box, I suppose, to make money elsewhere. And new technologies could be what it takes to make that happen.